We're here at a home that we designed uh, for uh, some clients, young couple. They wanted to build, I'll call it a forever home. Uh, so there was sort of a different approach than if you were building a home that maybe somebody was going to flip or stay in for, you know, four or five years. They wanted a home that could accommodate a large family. Uh, they have a very large extended family, but there's sort of a casual sophistication to it. And because it's situated in Nobleton on a large lot surrounded by conservation area and farmland, there was a lot of privacy. Uh, so you'll see when we were designing the home and the interior architecture, there's a lot of focus on the views. The choice to use color within the home was very much influenced by the surroundings. You'll see that there's a lot of shots of greens and yellows and blues, there's a lot of texture through different woods and stones. So it all sort of took its inspiration from the surroundings and the whole thing works holistically. As you enter the home, you enter this huge barrel vaulted entryway with a direct view out to the backyard uh, and the doors in the family room to the backyard open accordion style so that the family room is indoor-outdoor in a way. So the experience starts with a very understated introduction and then it opens up. So the family room is very central. It's off the front hall, it's off the kitchen. Lots of seating, big sectional sofa, ottoman coffee table so that the kids can lay on it or play. And then either side of the fireplace, we also did some built-in banquettes so that if they had 15, 16 people over, you know, some friends, you could have different seating groupings, more intimate conversations. But at the same time, it's all done tonally so that if it is just the family, just the four of them, it still feels intimate and cocooning. This family in particular, they cook a lot. She has a vegetable garden out in the backyard. I've been the beneficiary of the vegetable garden and it's, she's quite a good gardener and quite a good cook. So the kitchen had to be functional. It had to be a place they could have a dinner for eight or ten, but you had to be able to spill. You had to be able to enjoy yourself. It couldn't be too precious. So, you know, the floors are done in a porcelain tile and the countertops are done in a natural quartzite, which is actually harder than granite. This particular one has quite a luminous quality, so that even though we have this deep blue kitchen, the stone kind of adds this airiness to it. By introducing some of the metals, the brass hood, and some of the brass detailing around the doors and on the island, again, you have this light reflectance, which contrasts the heaviness of the painted cabinetry and the walnut. We vaulted the ceiling in the breakfast area so that it created a visual separation between the family room and the kitchen and it just made the whole space soar. We were able to use some dramatic lighting down that central vault instead of doing a fixture just over the table which is another approach if you're having trouble finding a center point on a table. Maybe you just treat the room instead of the table itself. The dining room faces the front of the house, and it's one of the darker spaces, and we put it there for that purpose. The dining room is very much an evening space. The walls are done in a mossy green, and then we have this custom wall covering that is almost like an abstracted forest scene at dusk. The lights over the table, a very modern form with a dome, but then they're quite textural on the exterior, and then the interior done in the leaf material. Again, this layering of the country rough texture with the glamour of the gold leaf. Some sophistication on a more urban level and then a sophisticated take on a more country aesthetic. Powder Room was a bit of a departure from the rest of the space. There's high contrast, light and dark. We did this angled mirror. Everything's backlit marble with light coming from the side so it all kind of glows. And then you know, you've got a repetition of all these metals through the faucets and the sinks. So you get a bit of sparkle, but you still get some texture. We were fortunate enough to be brought onto this project when it was still being planned. And looking at the roof plan, we saw that there was some interesting height there. So we asked if we could vault the master bedroom, uh, give it some real presence. That enabled us to sort of play with the height and you'll see a contemporary take on a four poster bed. And then keeping it relatively understated, we didn't want to over furnish, but we didn't want it to feel empty. We commissioned a custom light fixture that takes its inspiration from like a Calder mobile, which helps fill the volume without being overpowering. It's not too heavy. 
We had an issue with some of the structure actually when we were designing the master bedroom and the fireplace couldn't be centered on the bed. So there was a lot of sort of, what do we do here? So we centered the mantle to the bed even though the fireplace is a little off. So you'll see the asymmetry of that mantle. It's not just an aesthetic decision, it's to maintain a center line. And I think it was quite a successful solution to a problem. They wanted his and her dressing spaces. And instead of having you know, a hall from the master bedroom to the closets to the bathroom, we just opened it up so that you walk from the bedroom into a dressing room, into the bathroom. There is a mirrored wall which hides some of the things you don't need on display. And then we've got the open storage with the more interesting pieces, the purses, the shoes. We put a center island which holds most of the jewelry and shoes. And then we did a glass top so that she could actually see some of the pieces that she uses on a regular basis. And then at the end, you've got two windows and a mirror with a makeup area. And then storage for all of her makeup accoutrement. Master bathroom is pretty special. Amazing views out to the conservation area. And because the site is sloped, it almost feels like you're lying in the tub floating above the trees. And you've got this huge, big, round window, these vaulted ceilings, these dramatic light fixtures down the center. And then we split his and hers vanities either side to create some symmetry with the shower on one side in a glass enclosure and then the WC in a glass enclosure on the other. And it's a way to sort of hold a space without creating physical barriers and separations. Their young daughter has such personality and she's so much fun. They wanted the room to be fun, but not childlike. And so we really played with color and pattern, the bed done in a bright yellow, and then the black and white polka dotted wall covering on the two side walls, and then the dramatic, traditionally inspired, but with a mid-century execution, these sort of split drapes in blues and creams and whites. We have the black and white carpet uh, in the floral pattern. So we really have, we have these polka dots, we have florals, we have this wonderful photo collage of flamingos. We've got some pink going on. It's just a fun space. And I think it would be fun for a five-year-old. I think it would be fun for an 18-year-old. It's a great kid's room. Before they moved all the furniture in, we were hanging fixtures. The light fixture is feathered. And she walked in and she looked up and she was like, I have a bird. And it was adorable. I think she loves her room. The guest room, again, is a bit of a, more of a moody space. We did it in a deep blue-gray, bringing in some golds and some ochres. We did a little modern bench in a burgundy, some dramatic globe lighting. As I say, they like to entertain, and I would think that there are times when people just need to crash and maybe not drive home. So yeah, the guest room, I'm sure, gets a lot of use. The lower level, or basement, has amazing ceiling heights. I mean, you'd never know you were in a basement. And the lower level is really for large-scale entertaining. They have a very large extended family, so when they have Christmas dinner, it's 30 people. Uh, so that's what it accommodates. It accommodates 30 people to dine, a lounge for everyone to enjoy, a pre and post drink, uh, a bar for entertaining, and a catering kitchen, which is hidden from view behind these sliding glass doors that have a printed image of a 1960s Italian beach scene. And then you slide them open and you have this serving counter and you can watch a chef cook or you can set up your buffet. It's very engaging and it's very participatory and it really does work. You can have large groups of people, you never feel crowded. It's really a wonderful space to experience. This project took about three to four years from start to finish because we were involved right from the beginning, from the planning stages, right through to the, to the decorating. We had our hand in everything and we had the opportunity to really get to know the clients and really personalize the space. And it really functions for them. They're really happy with it and I know that they're happy with it because I get invited over and I get to enjoy it with them. And it's amazing, not just to see a project come to fruition, but to be able to experience it and know that it makes people happy.